Come on. Whenever I'm with you, I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. That's that mix slide. I want you. I'm going to keep you in my arms. I won't let nobody come between us. Because you're second to none. That's that mix slide. The hottest R&B album in the country right now. Y'all better get that mix slide, Egyptian Musk album. What's going on, family? Glad to have y'all in here. It's a late night show, but I'm here. I had to get the show done for the week. I've been real busy taking care of stuff, but I'm here for the family. I'm ready to chop it up. What we're going to do, y'all, we're going to take that real quick commercial break. Let everybody know that we're in here. We're going to make it do what it do, but we'll be right back. So don't you move a muscle right here on Tariq Radio. Yo, you still ain't getting women? Really? Come on, son. You need to go to badboymembership.com and step up your game. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game. And I'm telling you that if you really want to attract beautiful women, you need to go to badboymembership.com. This is where you get 45 through 90 minute step-by-step dating advice tutorials every month. Just sign up, follow the advice, and you'll get the woman you want. Go to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. You need to check out the hottest, newest thriller of the summer called Noxious. A bear's turn fatal when a reckless woman confronts her cheating boyfriend. And after a careless mistake, all hell breaks loose and hell has no fury like a woman scorned. Noxious. Passion can be toxic. The movie available right now on Amazon and streaming on Prime. Or go to NoxiousTheMovie.com and you spell Noxious N-O-X-I-O-U-S and follow Noxious the Movie on all social media. What's up, family? If you are somebody who makes music and if you're really serious about delivering quality product, then go on the internet and visit my friends over at LegendaryMix.com. They have the experience you need to get the job done right. They have almost 20 years behind the boards, and they have experience that is unmatched. Legendary Mix delivers professional audio mixing and mastering for a great price and a fast turnaround time. And as a bonus, sign up to the email list at www.legendarymix.com and receive a discount link and a free music marketing ebook. So don't hesitate. Get started today. Visit legendarymix.com or send a text or call to 347 565 5892. What up, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Fan, everybody. And I got a brand new video game app out right now, everybody. It's called Crispy's Biscuits, everybody. And you can get the Crispy's Biscuits app right now on the iPhone Apple Store, everybody. And you can also get it on the Google Play Store, everybody. As a matter of fact, everybody, it was the number one game on Google Play all last week, everybody. The game is so exciting, everybody. There's 10 levels you can help me get through, everybody. Well, I'm dodging bottles of lotion, everybody. I'm dodging hair clippers, everybody. And I'm dodging tires. Go meet everybody. So get the Krispies Biscuits game right now, everybody, at CrispiesBiscuits.com, everybody. Now I'm about to do my coon laugh, everybody. The year is 2079. The futuristic nation of New Albion has been created to maintain a new racial apartheid system. There is a planned genocide that is going to target the nation's black population. A small group of black revolutionaries band together to launch guerrilla warfare attacks against their oppressors. Do they fail or do they succeed? Find out the answer by reading the book, Avoid the Machines. The new novel by author Scotty Vasco. Avoid the Machines. Now available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. The most intense new video game app has now arrived. A medieval kingdom has been plagued with chaos and disorder. An evil force has dominated the land. And now it is up to the bravest knights to fight back the demonic forces and bring justice to the kingdom of the Moors. Play the newest, most exciting battle fight game app ever, Moorish Kingdom. Available at MoorishKingdom.com. You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite, on Tariq Elite Radio. 
yo what's going on family we're here we're back welcome back to the show glad to have all of you guys tuning in ready to make it do what it do um again let me shout out to everybody who got the um egyptian musk album from my group mink slide that album is still on the top of the digital charts right now it's one of the top selling albums on um, iTunes and one of the top selling albums on Google Play. I think in, on Google Play, it's still in the top 10 of best selling albums and in the top five of R&B albums. So the Egyptian Musk album is really changing the game. And we're going to see some great things pop off on Monday. It's expanding. I've been getting a lot of calls from, from industry people. So you'll see some things popping off on Monday with um, the project expanding more, but we're changing the game with that album. It's it's doing wonderfully, especially for an independent R&B album. That City, City Lights, I mean, the, the single, I'm sorry, the single City Lights is a banger if you guys haven't heard it. I and mean, if you listen to the show on a regular, I know you guys have heard it. I know you guys have purchased the album. If you have not, Go to iTunes right now and get the album. And if you have Google Play, get Google Play and get the album. Download Egyptian Musk. We're making history with this album. We are making history with this album. The the reviews are just raved. We're getting rave reviews. We're going to start doing a lot of interviews. We've been getting a lot of interview requests for the album. Another thing that's very interesting, we've been getting a lot of requests for for vinyl and I didn't know that vinyl was still popping like that I guess people like to collect vinyl or whatever but we've been getting flooded with calls for vinyl records people want the vinyl version of the record so we're getting vinyl pressed up next week actually so we're gonna get that knocked out because we've been getting like big trade papers and all that asking for the vinyl so we're definitely getting that that's coming that's coming and we're gonna get the official um, CDs as well but shit I didn't know people were still rocking vinyl like that especially overseas I think that's it's real real big overseas too but you know I, I, again I thank everybody for supporting that Egyptian Must project man people are saying that this is the best R&B album of the year and I will humbly agree with that and it, if we're gonna talk real there's no other R&B album out right now touching that Egyptian Musk album. The Egyptian Musk album is 10 songs of complete bangers. Even the intro, which is not really an official song, is a banger on the Egyptian Musk album. You dig? But the vinyl is coming. All my DJs out there, the vinyl is coming. The vinyl, now, a lot of people are getting it on Spotify and Tidal. Even if you're getting it on Spotify, even if you get it on Tidal, I still want you guys to get the DV, uh, um, get the download. Still buy the download on iTunes and still buy it on um, Google Play. You know, that increases the ranking and the, the visibility of it, which is, that's the thing that's making it sell. People see it on the top of the chart, so other people around the world are peeping the album and they're loving it, and the album is just spreading around the world just by word of mouth. So I've been getting people from Sweden hit me up. They banging this shit. People bumping in at barbecues. It's only been out for a week. So this thing is it's really changing the game. So we're going to have some real good announcements on Monday, ladies and gentlemen. So let's, can we get into some, some real talk? I, and I apologize for being late this week. Usually I'll try to be on time doing the broadcast, the weekly podcast. I was running around all week taking care of some things with the ISM Radio crew. Shout out to my ladies from ISM Radio, Miss Bree, Miss Layla. We have that travel show that we did. We're going to start posting that up next week. We're going to post up the first episode. We did a web episode, a web series, the ISM Radio travel show, where we go around the country. Well, we already done it. We went on tour. We went to different cities around the country interviewing black owned business owners and we had an absolute ball we had a great time doing it so the first episode should be up on i'm gonna put it on Tariq radio my Tariq radio youtube account that's gonna be up next week and we're just not getting it edited right because i hired an editor almost hired 
because I, I didn't pay his ass because he didn't do shit. But I, I had this guy who was supposed to edit it months ago, and he sat on it. And I was so busy working with the album, I didn't have a chance to really get in his ass about it, you know, because I'm always juggling different projects. But last night we were doing some some pickup scenes. We did that last night. We had a great time goofing around, clowning around last night. But you guys are going to finally get to see it. The shit looks so good, man. And it, it's... It's a great uplifting show to see all these wonderful black businesses in these cities that a lot of folks might not even know about. You guys might not even know about it. And I want you guys, when you see these businesses, patronize every single one of them in your city because they, they're fly as shit. Down in New Orleans, we went to this place called Ego's. It's a gentleman's spa. Real cool brother and his queen, they own this shop, and it's a real, real nice spot. Real relaxing spot. They do haircuts, manicures, pedicures, massages for dudes, and they got some real fly sisters in there, and just stuff like that, man. Hidden gems that we own that we need to know more about. So we're showing this stuff in different cities. We went to Atlanta. We showed all the businesses there. We showed all the black businesses, or most of the ones we can squeeze in in a couple of days. We didn't get all of them, but we got a lot of them. So... You guys definitely check that out, all right? So anyway, let's get into what's going on out here. Let's get into the nitty-gritty family. Um, as we know, these white supremacists, they've um, upped the war. Right now, we're in the middle of a war with these white supremacists, and unfortunately, the war is very one-sided. The war is very one-sided, in the last couple of days, well, hell, not even the last couple of days, in the last week, there have been so many attacks on black American citizens by white supremacists and race soldiers. There have been so many brazen attacks by official race soldiers and deputized race soldiers. And as we know, these white supremacist groups, they've been deputized. And we've seen several cases of white supremacists, especially out here in California, the white supremacists got beat down and pushed out of South Central LA. So they started to do ambush attacks. So the white supremacists, they killed this brother in Long Beach. They found an elderly black man. He's 50, I, I don't like to call a person 57 elderly. They're not really elderly. What, what's technically elderly? Shit, I don't know what's the technical age for elderly. But this brother, a white supremacist followed him in the bathroom and shot him with a rifle. They said that there was the word KKK scrawled on a park bench, and this was a park in Long Beach. <clears throat> shot this brother, and now law enforcement are saying they don't know where this white supremacist is. This happened last week, or a couple of weeks ago, but I think last week, but understand the the law enforcement they've been infiltrated by white supremacists and they know who the hell did this you don't shoot somebody in broad daylight and bounce and they don't know nothing let me tell you something if a black person shoots somebody they know who he is what neighborhood he's from all of his friends and those are all the people they're going to arrest. They're going to arrest the whole block. They'll know exactly who did it. They start pulling up video cams from all over the place. L.A. is a city full of video cameras. There's a video camera on every damn block. There's video cameras all near parks. Do not believe that they don't know who the hell shot that black man in Long Beach. LA and just Los Angeles as a whole, there's cameras everywhere. You dig? So they know, but again, they get to play dumb because they've deputized these white supremacists. Just like down in Florida, when the white supremacists shot the brother and the the race soldier police sheriff was like, well, hey, he, you stand your ground. I don't know what to do. I mean, it was a pretty violent push if you look at it. I'm white and I say so. It was that type of thing. So what happens is they deputize these white supremacist civilians to do their dirty work. So now you can't sue the city. You understand? They get a clean kill and now the city don't have to up the ante and up the money. This is why they're allowing them to do this. This is saving them money. 
wiping us out. That's why family, look, we're gonna have to talk real and we're gonna have to get calm. Black people, we're gonna have to get calm and we're gonna have to get cool. And we're gonna have to understand nobody's gonna save us. Nobody's coming to save you. I want black folks to understand that. That's the theme of today's show. Nobody's coming to save you. Law enforcement, they've been infiltrated by white supremacists, 100%. So they're team white supremacy. They're the ones covering up all of these murders of you and us. But like I said, in California, they're doing these ambush hits. There was another black man up in, um, I think, near San Jose. One of his white co-workers killed him. They arrested the white co-worker, you know, and this was a couple of days ago. They're going to find a way to give him a slap on the wrist. And I looked on the suspect's page, his, his inst- not his, his Instagram, but his Facebook page. And sure enough, he has the white supremacist tattoo. That Celtic cross, which is very common among white supremacists. So this is why I tell black people, look for the clues. These people, this is a religion and they have their religious clues that they're putting out there as dog whistles to other white supremacists. And another thing, watch out for white supremacy denial. Whenever you have people in the dominant society going out of your way to tell you something ain't white supremacy, I can almost guarantee 100% of the time that person who's telling you that is themselves a white supremacist or a suspected white supremacist. And understand, white supremacy is warfare, and warfare is deception. So it's their job to deceive you and tell you that the pain that's being inflicted on you, it's not white supremacy, it's just a big coincidence. So don't let these people waste your time. Black people got this thing where we wanna latch on to certain people in the dominant society and we wanna be in denial about them being team white supremacy. I know a lot of black people listen to Joe Rogan a lot of black people, for for what reason, I don't know. A lot of black people like Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is such a white supremacist supporter. I mean, he's getting more and more blatant every day. He was supporting Roseanne with her little, her um, racist rant talking about, oh, she was just stressed. And I mean, he's one of these people who makes a lot of excuses for the white supremacist. So Joe Rogan is going to come on out full-fledged, alt-right pretty soon. It's just, he's just itching to get out of it. He's just itching to go ahead and go full force with it. You understand? But yeah, he's real. You can tell by the way he puts those alt-right people on his platform and he starts throwing them softball questions. He's real sympathetic towards them. You understand? So y'all get off this whole thing that Joe Rogan is somehow some, he's one of the cool ones. No, he's not. He's, He's a suspected white supremacist supporter. We're going to have to come to the realization, just like with um, Alex Jones. For years, black folks was fucking with Alex Jones. And I'm like, man, Alex Jones is a suspected white supremacist all day. So now he got tired of playing around with it now that Trump got in office. And he he got real comfortable with just coming right on out with it. Oh, the, 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 the blacks. You know, he's he's all out with it now. As a matter of fact, they, they just banned him off YouTube for like 90 days for his racist um, xenophobia, whatever they call it now. It's just white supremacy. They like putting all these different names on it. It's nothing but white supremacy. And as we know, our sister Nia was killed up there in the Bay Area. She was killed up there in Oakland by a white supremacist. The white supremacist was arrested and uh, they're already doing some splaining for him. They're talking about the mentally ill angle they're doing all that stuff now i pointed this out a lot of folks didn't catch it until i pointed this out but the the white supremacist who killed sister nia up there in the bay area black girl and her sister the sister was wounded she didn't get killed but he stabbed both of these women in the neck he had on one outfit and then after he did the murders or the murder he changed into another outfit so he he was very aware of what he was doing and also the outfit that he had on, he had on these um, like tan docker style pants, khaki pants, and that's what a lot of those white supremacists were wearing in Charlottesville. That's number one. He was dressed like those white supremacists were dressed in Charlottesville at the 
white supremacist march out there. But also in the surveillance video, he had on some black boots with white shoestrings. Now that's very significant. That's You don't wear some shit like that just randomly. Why would anybody wear black shoes, or black boots with white strings? Black boots and white strings, that's the attire of skinheads. Skinheads wear that. If you Google boots and laces, that's something that they wear. It's like a code that they give each other. The red, they have red strings and they have white strings. The white strings are the newer skinheads and if they get red strings in their black boots, the red strings means that they've shed blood for the white supremacy movement, meaning that they've killed a black person or harmed a black person. So it's like an initiation. You understand? And the the media and law enforcement, they're still not connecting these dots. They're still not connecting these dots. They're still talking about this was a random attack and they don't know why he did it. They're still playing dumb. They know good and well this wasn't a random attack. This was very deliberate. They were first trying to say, well, he's a derelict. They were trying to make it seem like he was some kind of homeless person or something. No, he's not. These are terror cells that these white supremacists have. And he put on a uniform with very coded attire and and committed a, a murder for his organization. See, they keep trying to play that lone wolf angle, that lone wolf mentally ill angle, so you don't have to indict all the other white supremacists that he's attached to. Because then you're gonna start leading to the police because they understand fully that there are white supremacists who are connected to the skinheads. But we gotta look at all the clues. When we're dealing with this white supremacist terror movement right now, we have to look at all the clues. This is why I'm always trying to teach you guys about tattoos. I try to teach you guys about the symbolisms these guys use because again, White supremacy is a religion, and what they do with their religion is go on jihads. And the jihad is to go out and kill black people. That's a jihad for the white supremacists. And it's very spiritual to them because these people are demonic. These people are demonic from, from top to bottom. So just because you say spirit, understand all spirits ain't good spirits. You got good spirits and you got evil spirits. These people, their spirit is evil to the fucking bone. And that's something that black folks have to come to terms with. Sucking up to white mommy and white daddy, you're going against the will of God. Let me get a little spiritual here. You're going up against the spirit of God, the, the tenets of God. These people are waging the Rahoa. I tried to teach you guys about that in Hidden Colors 4. We warned you guys back in 2014 that they're starting the religious holy war. The racial holy war. That's what Rahoa is. We broke that down. We broke down the symbols. To them, they've made their survival, because this is what it all boils down to, white genetic survival, they made that a religion. So they put on these little symbolic outfits and go out here and commit these murders, not only against black folks, they'll do it to themselves too. They'll do it to other white folks too, just to show that they mean business. And you notice, before all this stuff started happening, all of these white supremacist groups, they were attacking white people first. You notice this, a lot of these school shootings and church shootings, especially down in Texas, a lot of these were done by other white supremacists. And a lot of people were confused. They were like, if they're white supremacists, why are they attacking other white people? That's to let other white people know, hey, when we go on, go in on these Negroes, don't you dare try to give us no kind of pushback because this will get you in line. It's the same thing. Let's, let's look at history. You get the people who's gonna turn on your movement first. And a lot of times, if you have a movement that you're about to engage in, you wanna get on the people's cases who are gonna turn on your movement. And in the dominant white society, they feel there's some liberal whites that might turn on them or might be a little bit too sympathetic to the niggers. So let me get these other white people in line to let them know that we mean business. 
Same thing, let's go back to the Haitian Revolution with the Haitian Revolution, which was a fully justified revolution because the people there were being mistreated. They were being enslaved, so they were fully justified in getting rid of the oppressors. But when the person who helped kick off the Haitian Revolution, Mackendall, the Haitian brother, before they started to attack the French, Mackendall got at the coons first. He knew once we started this war against the white supremacists, these coons are going to be a problem. So he got rid of that coon problem and started poisoning the coons. You understand? But the thing is, these people are having a religious holy war against us. They're putting on their attire. Remember a few months ago down there in Texas when the white supremacist student shot up the school, we went to his Facebook page and he had some very symbolic emblems on his jacket. He had like an octopus, which was symbolic of the Cthulhu, I think that's the name of it, which was um, based on a novel written by a white supremacist. He had this demonic Baphomet symbol, which was indicative of Adam Waffen, a white supremacist organization that is also a devil worshiping organization that's into Satanism. A lot of these people are into Satanism. So again, you guys can listen to the archive, but I was breaking down all these little symbols that these guys use. Remember when the brother in um, Ohio got killed? Was it Sam DuBose? I think that's his name. He got killed by Ray Tensing. Ray Tensing had on a Confederate shirt under his uniform. That's like having a cross. You're about to go on jihad and you got your religious cross with you. You're about to commit your crime. You're about to do a blood sacrifice with your religious emblem. You understand? Yes, H.P. Lovecraft was a white supremacist. Somebody in the chat room asked that. You better look up H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was a major white supremacist. Look him up. He was a he was a major white supremacist for his time. And he was in the early 20th century. H.P. Lovecraft was a major white supremacist. But the thing is we have to understand that trying to gain sympathy from these demonic people harming us, that's just not going to happen. They're circling their wagons and they're tightening the noose on the niggers. And they don't care what socioeconomic background you're from, black people are going to have to get off that thing. No matter how poor you are, it was this week alone. Was, yesterday, was a brother down in Nashville got shot by a race soldier. A suspected white supremacist cop killed this brother, executed him down in Nashville. And today, another brother, 25 years old. A lot of people are saying he was 12 years old. He wasn't 12 years old. It was a 25-year-old brother. The race soldier started chasing him. They jumped out the car and just started blasting. And they start doing the I'm white and I say so. Well, he had a gun and... He, he, the, the brother didn't pose a threat. You don't see a gun in the video. We we posted the dash cam video of what happened. There's no you don't see a gun. He didn't raise a gun. He didn't do anything. He was he turned around and the race soldiers executed him, but they're gonna use the I'm white and I say so narrative. Just like they did with Tamir Rice. When they shot Tamir Rice, they were like, Well, he was reaching in his waist. And if you look at the video of Tamir Rice getting executed, the little twelve year old child was not reaching in his waist at all. But it's, I'm white and I say he was reaching in his waist. I don't care what you saw. I'm telling you what you saw. And we're not going to punish our guy. Also, this week in Vegas, there was a white supremacist race soldier suspect who killed a, a black man a couple of years ago. I think it was about two years ago or maybe a year ago. He put him in a chokehold and killed the brother. The brother was innocent, unarmed, but this race soldier put him in a chokehold. That was illegal. And they had a grand jury say that, well, we're not going to indict this guy. It was a secret grand jury. It's one of them secret grand juries we keep hearing about. We don't know who's in it, but these secret grand juries always seem to not indict the race soldiers. This happened 
the announcement that they weren't going to indict this race soldier. This, this happened yesterday, I think. So they're just all out right now. That's just what it is. Let's not get emotional. See, that's the thing. We got to stop getting emotional. Now in Ohio, when they killed the brother, you know, everybody was out in the streets, walking around in circles, mad and yelling. And I'm looking at the video because there were several people posting videos of, um, you know, the police out there, very calm. Some of the police were out there giggling. They were like laughing and joking with each other, very calm, just standing their ground, just standing there while the black people are hemming and hawing, walking around in a circle, yelling, crying, mad, spitting, stomping. And the, the, the white supremacist race soldiers are there like, okay, let's let them blow off a little steam. They'll be all right. You understand? But they know that black people are afraid and that fear is going to have to go out the window. They know that they're going to keep punishing us because there's not going to be any systematic punishment from the justice or judicial. There's no justice system from the judicial system from the top. It's corrupted with white supremacy all the way to the top. So they know nothing is going to happen on that front. As a matter of fact, not only is nothing going to happen, they're going to be rewarded. When they kill you, when they kill us, the white supremacists are going to be rewarded. And they know black folks ain't going to do shit. We're going to hem and haul, walk around in circles, cry and scream, and hope that we get a payout. And let me tell y'all something, that money thing, that, that payout thing, that's going out the window too. This thing where you're going to get a couple of million dollars because your family got killed. See, the white supremacists... They're adapting. They've seen, okay, black people, they've accepted cowardice. Black people, we're trying to inflict harm on these people. We want them to be, we really want them to be upset and in despair. But they see, well, black people, we don't mind if a couple of relatives get killed as long as we can get a couple of dollars. So they're like, uh-oh, these niggas are a little bit too content with selling out their family. So we're going to have to take the money away. So they're starting to dry up that whole settlement thing. There have been families killed by race soldiers, and there's one family that was awarded a dollar. Another brother who was shot at his home, he was just sitting at home, and the race soldiers came and shot him. They gave the family four dollars. I mean, they're really adding insult to injury. All that little money, that's they're drying that money up. So black folks trying to make these little deals, like, well, damn, they just shot my son, but at least I get me a, I get a new Benz and I get me a little house. That, no, that's going to dry up. You're not going to get that luxury no more. You're just not going to get that luxury no more. Now that they see that black people are cowardly and, and timid and you're accepting your fate, oh, they're going to go all the way in. You know, the, the white supremacists, they only will step back when blood is drawn on their side. See, it's a numbers game with the white supremacists. It's all about how many bodies they're getting on this side. It's a body count thing. And the only time they step back and make an analyzation of what's going on is when there's a body caught on their side. And understand, the way they react to a body getting caught by a black person, you gotta look at the, notice how extra they are with it. Over in Milwaukee, a couple of days ago, a black dude, actually killed a white cop over there. They went to arrest this dude on a drug warrant and he was like, fuck this. The brother just said, fuck it, and just start busting. He emptied his clip and he killed one white cop out there. And boy, when a, now cops get killed all the time. White dudes kill cops damn near on a daily basis. Cops get killed all the time. 90% of the time by white males. And they kind of sweep that under the rug. When a white cop is shot by a white male, they sweep that so far under the rug. But when a black person kills a cop, they start acting like it was a military officer killed in the line of military duty. I mean, they go all out. They go real extra with it. They, they start doing these motorcades and the 21 gun salute. I mean, they act like it was a military killing. Now, the, the brother who did it, now we suspect that the guy was mentally ill. 
You understand? And this, this the brother, he seems like he had a history of mental illness and he just snapped. And this is what we have to focus on. We have to focus on getting the proper mental illness help in some of these communities, in some of these low income communities. We really, really, really need to focus on getting resources to mental health facilities in these so-called lower income areas because that's what this is about. This is about mental illness. And I think that person should get help. He should get treatment. He should not get any jail time and they arrested him or whatever, but he should get help. He should get mental therapy. He was a lone wolf who was mentally ill. You dig? But we got to understand the seriousness of this war that they've waged on us. And we got to stop being emotional. And we have to stop looking for a white savior. Now, the other day, the white actress, Anne Hathaway, she put up a tweet or an Instagram post about the killing of our sister Nia, um, Nia up there in the Bay Area. Anne Hathaway was talking about, hey, you know, this white privilege. We white folks got to check our white privilege. And I, I don't even want to read all of what she says, but basically she's been saying what all of us have been saying for the, the last million years about white supremacy. So she made her statement about white privilege and white people got to do better and all this stuff. White people have to acknowledge our white privilege. She was doing that. And do you know... Negroes on the internet just went nuts. They just fell in love. They're like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, Miss Ann, thank you. I mean, I've seen black celebrities. I mean, everybody's licking this woman's cat and taint. This woman acknowledged white supremacy and niggas are just melting like a bunch of plantation mammies and bucks. And Negroes, do you know how sick you are? I'm not, you're supposed to be against white supremacy. You're supposed to be against non-justice. Black folks, stop being so easily swayed. When I see black people just oozing and melting because a white woman acknowledged white supremacy and you just, oh, your little nuts are tingling. Oh Lord, oh, she's so woke. I was gonna invite you to the barbecue. I've been hearing all that dumb shit all week. It, it don't take nothing for the people in the dominant society to get y'all asses eaten from their hands. Y'all like little baby monkeys. That's why they call black folks monkeys. Because they, they can give you little scraps and nigger trinkets and you're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's why they call black folks monkeys because they can train you like one. Stop falling into the damn stereotype. You ain't monkey, stop acting like one. They come along and there's somebody in the chat room before they said it was the Jane Goodall effect. The white women, and that's true, white women come around Black people got this thing where the white woman can run all types of game, and that's what the white supremacist male, they've used the white women for years. That's how white feminism got started. The white women would go over there to Africa and, and they would show the white males, hey, you don't have to go over here with guns. I can I can help you colonize this place. I can go over there with my whiteness and just have them eating out my, my, my hand. I can go over here and just hug a few babies and give them some scraps and give them some some decent food after we've already fucked up their environment. The reason why they need food is because we've messed the environment up. But I go over there and just hand them a couple of scraps and they'll eat out my hand. And this is all over the planet. We got to get off this whole monkey shit. And monkey shit means that you're running up behind the white supremacists for some bananas. Everywhere you go on the planet, the minute somebody white show up, everybody's beating their chest, jumping around like little baby animals. That shit is corny looking. You're bigger than that. You're better than that, black people, globally. This is why you keep getting exploited over and over again. There was a white dude down there in Haiti. 
This story just came out. He's been going to Haiti back and forth for 15 years. He's a missionary. He's going out there with food and nigger trinkets and all this old stuff after the white supremacists is They've already devastated the place, but you know, you send another white person down there, another white supremacist down there with nigger trinkets and food and everybody's gathering around him. Come to find out he's down there molesting kids left and right. He just got indicted. And when they get indicted for uh, molesting black kids, that means they've, they've done a whole bunch of them. And a story came out, and this is very interesting. An article came out about this guy molesting these children and the article said missionary who went down to Haiti admitted that he had sex with children between the ages of 5 and 17 that was the headline of this article and do you know how deceptive and dirty that is to to word an article like that he had sex with five-year-olds, how in the fuck does a five-year-old have, you don't have sex with a five-year-old. Saying you're having sex almost sounds consensual. That sounds like you got consent from the fucking five-year-old. This is the Western media putting this out. You don't have sex with a five-year-old. You rape one, you molest one, you abuse one, but you don't have sex with one, y'all sick bastards had sex with a five-year-old the hell this is how sick these people are and they're all on code with their sickness because they've always sexualized black children that's a, that's something that's been going on for years they've always sexualized black children like the the children are in on the sexual deviancy deviancy that they're inflicting on them in the dominant white society But that shows how weak a community and a society is when they can come in and do anything to your children. I just saw a video earlier before the broadcast up there in, um, I think in Maryland, the 12 year old boy, the cops were gaffling him up and kicking him and beating him, had his arms all behind his back and the police officer said, hey man, I'm gonna put this little fucker in the hospital. Cause the kid was trying to you know he, he didn't want to get hemmed up he was hemming the kid up and hurting his arm and the kid was kind of struggling back and they go to these low income neighborhoods because you know ain't no grown ass men around every time you see some of these incidents that's happening a lot of times it's a lot of the women running around screaming and yelling but again this Anne Hathaway lady, let's go back to her. So she's acknowledging white extremists, basically. And I want black people to understand this. Just because a white person acknowledges a white extremist, because what they think is white supremacy, and let's be very clear. Y'all got to be clear on what people in the dominant white society think a white supremacist is. To us, in black society, we know what a white supremacist is. That's anybody who believes that they should be in a superior position over black people and who are benefiting from that superior position and they're not doing anything about it. That's the definition of a white supremacist. If you're benefiting from that white supremacist system and you're doing what you can do through speech, thought, and action to maintain that system, that makes you a white supremacist. You don't have to go around yelling nigger, 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 and you don't have to have a cross in your front yard or whatever. The A white supremacist, as we know, is somebody on a jury allowing a race soldier to get away with killing a black person. A white supremacist is a supervisor at a job that's not hiring black people because of race. That's a white supremacist. A white supremacist is a white teacher that's funneling black children into special education. That's a white supremacist. So it's not all about direct anger. It's all about maintenance of the system. Now to the dominant white society, a white supremacist is somebody in the alt-right, the Klan, the skinheads, the KKK, the neo-Nazi movement. And that's it. To them, th that's what a white supremacist is. So the thing is, they have no problem 
calling a white extremist because we got to understand the words and the definitions. Those are white extremists. Dil- Dylan Roof, that's a white extremist. They took their white nationalism to a whole different level where they're inflicting direct violence, whereas the regular white supremacists, they're more covert with it. They like to use indirect violence, but when somebody uses violence like a race soldier, they will quietly support that race soldier. So black people don't get all excited just because they've called out a white extremist. They have no problem doing that. They have no problem calling out a Richard Spencer or Dylan Roof because those people pretty much let it be known what their ideologies are. So they've somewhat gotten off code from the other covert white supremacists. So they're already off code. So they're like, well, fuck it, I'm wide open. I'm, I wanna kill niggas. So the regular white supremacists are like, oh my God, we're gonna have to check our privilege and call these people out. Yeah, those people, those people like that. Yeah, our privilege, we're gonna have to use our privilege to call Dylan Roof and this guy who killed Nia. We're gonna have to call them out. You understand? Understand the game. You gotta understand the game. And when they start calling out white extremists, all of a sudden, all the Negroes out here, you you start thinking that you're back on the plantation again. When they say, well, our white privilege is bad and black folks, Oh Lord, Miss Annie, Lord, Lord Jesus, use acknowledge our pain. Oh Lord, Mammy, I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance with my son. Oh, I love you, Miss Ann. Oh, you're so good to me. Can I get an extra butter biscuit, Mammy? You dig? So that's how we start acting when they do some shit that they're supposed to do. You're supposed to acknowledge and destroy and replace white supremacy. And then y'all start talking all that. I am mean, you invited to the cookout. That type of talk shows us that you're not ready to get rid of systematic white supremacy. You just want a sympathetic master. Black folks, you want a sympathetic master because you got to understand black people know when you go after white supremacy for real, for real, then you're gonna have to get off your ass and take responsibility. Let's let's talk real talk, because a lot of black folks are sitting on their hands because you don't wanna do the inevitable. Black people, we've been sitting around letting white mommy and daddy take care of us for the last 400 years. We kinda, let, let's talk real. A lot of black people kinda like the fact that mommy, white mommy, white daddy, they're taking care of the heavy load. All the society running, they're running the justice system, they're running the police system, they're running major industry. We kinda like where we can just kinda kick back and goof off while they do the heavy lifting. They got the responsibility of the heavy lifting. And we can just, you know, we we do a little work here and there and we get our little nights off and weekends off to drink, smoke, party, fuck, eat buffalo wings, and then go back to work Monday. It's the same plantation setup. You know, we like our little set schedule, our, our, our plantation hours, just like in slavery. You work from sun up to sundown, and after sundown, you get to kick off in the in the Negro quarters. You get to eat you some fat back and some pork chops, and you, you get to play the banjo. And on Saturday, you get to go through the little juke joint. And on Sunday, you go to church, and then you go back to work on the plantation picking that cotton on Monday. We kind of like that setup. A lot of black folks don't want to admit that. Massa has to worry about taxes and bills and mortgages and city planning and all the heavy stuff. We ain't got to run no businesses like that. We let them do that and we kind of kick back and just get us a little job here and we're happy with that. Well, Massa, they're tired of footing the bill and they're in survival mode. And the biggest threat to their survival is you. So they're cutting off that faucet, black folks, whether you like it or not. Being a coon, being a mammy, being a bedwench, that's not going to save you. 
Massa's tired because Massa is in a fight for his life. See the thing, we, we think this one is gonna blow over. Every like 20, 30 years, there's always a big backlash from the white supremacists. You know, we get a we get a couple of symbolic gains and then they take those symbolic gains back, then there's a backlash, then we get mad, we get upset, they give us some nigga trinkets, we're calm for a couple of for a decade or so, and then they started they start having another backlash, then we get upset. Well, this backlash is different, family. This is a different backlash. We've never seen a backlash like this in the history of this country. We've never seen killings of black people, lynchings like this, back to back to back with no repercussion. We've never seen that in this country. This is the only time in history that is happening at this rate. This is genocidal right now because the white supremacists, they don't have another 20 or 30 years to kind of lollygag with us play this little tug of war because in about 40 and 50 years you got to understand this the white supremacists are going extinct so they're in a fight for survival they're saying that you know they're going to be the minority here in about 40 50 years they're going to be the minority in america well that means your extinction rate is going to accelerate because the white supremacists, they're dying faster than they can reproduce. And this is all over the world. You understand? So black folks think we're going to just kind of wait them out. No, because they'll destroy the whole planet. They're like, if we go, everybody's going to go. We'll destroy this whole shit. We'll take all y'all with us. But yeah, that lifespan might be shorter than that because there are all types of factors that's causing the white supremacists to not procreate in sufficient numbers and when you cannot procreate when the death rate is higher than the birth rate that's unreversible in many cases it's irreversible you can't reverse it once a, a group starts going extinct you can't really reverse that you understand so a lot of things that they're doing they're trying to latch on to the Asians trying to you know, create some Eurasian race people trying to create a bunch of Keanu Reeves. They can try to do that, but the Asians, you know, they'll wise up to that because they don't want too much of their society infiltrated by outsiders. You know, you got the Asian bedwinches and all that, but within their society, you know, they, they understand what the white supremacists are capable of if they get too much of a stronghold. You understand? So what they want to do, they they got to get all the resources they can in order to survive as long as they can. That's why they're trying to get over in Africa real heavy. They're trying to get them a real good foothold over there in Africa. But the thing is, the inevitable is going to happen. These white supremacists are going to try to, to wipe a lot of us out in large numbers. And black folks are going to have to stand up and fight, fight, fight physically to protect yourself there's gonna have to be some bloodshed going on to protect yourself so black folks need to be planning and plotting every single day on how they are going to survive these deadly white supremacists especially when they're harming your children nobody's going to save you or your children black folks when I see black kids get hemmed up and black folks sitting around here hollering and yelling, no. Let me let me get deep. Can we get deep tonight, family? Let me get deep with you guys tonight. Spirits, good or bad, spirits live on based on the way the people who maintain that spirit utilizes and exercises that spirit when they're alive. That's how spirits are maintained. And I said before, the secret of life is to live without fear. When you live without fear, you create a spirit that never dies. You create a spirit of courage, a courageous spirit, be it good or bad, be it good or bad, a courageous spirit never dies. It lives on. 
The problem is we start looking at things in terms of good and bad. Now, you know, you do have negative karma. You do have positive karma. Now, the white supremacists, are they getting a part of that negative karma? Yes, because the universe is wiping the white supremacists out. But they've embraced an evil spirit, and an evil spirit is very powerful. This is why a lot of these white extremists, they embrace Satanism. They've realized, hell, we know what we're doing ain't godly, but hell, Satan, he's just as good. But the thing is, if you relish a spirit and you're willing to die for that spirit and you have no fear to sacrifice your life for that spirit, even if it's an evil spirit, that spirit will remain because it, it puts out a certain energy from the people who believe in that spirit. Now, they believe in white supremacy. White supremacy has been around for a minute because people believe in that shit. People will die for white supremacy. They'll die for it. They'll sacrifice their lives. They'll sacrifice going to jail for life. They'll sacrifice getting shot to maintain white supremacy. There's strong dedication to white supremacy, just like Islam. Islam has been around for a long time because people are willing to go on a jihad for Islam. They'll blow up planes. They'll do anything. They'll go on a jihad. And you look at some of these people who are going to jihad for their religion, look at some of their countries. Look at some of the Muslim Muslim countries. All Muslim countries ain't broke. You got bawling ass Muslim countries over there because they have a spirit where they'll die for their beliefs. And that creates a spirit. When people are willing to die for their beliefs, you don't really die because we're all spiritual beings contained in bodies. And when a spirit is forceful and a spirit makes an impact based on the person doing it, other people will pick up on that spirit. You feel that? This is why in black society, there's certain people whose spirits are still here, like Malcolm X. These people who live fearlessly, their spirits are still here because they, they weren't afraid to invoke their spirit into the ethos. People like Dr. Martin Luther King, he was a fearless brother. He went out there, he took those bumps and bruises. He made many mistakes, but he was still fearless. He put himself out there on the line and his spirit is still alive. The spirit of many of the Black Panthers, that spirit is still out there. The spirit of Marcus Garvey, these people who did things fearlessly. The spirit of Elijah Muhammad, these people who challenged white supremacy, the people who directly went after it, they didn't die. The physical body died, but the spirit is here. This is why they don't like, this is why Cointelpro, when the Cointelpro program happened, they said, we got to stop the rise of a black messiah. Look at the words J. Edgar Hoover used. He understood that. When you have a black quote unquote messiah putting out a spirit, messiah, spirit, same thing. They know that the people are going to gravitate towards that spirit and the spirit won't die. You understand? The spirit don't die. So Malcolm didn't die. Malcolm is still here with us because he made such an impact because he was fearless. Malcolm and, and um, Marcus Garvey didn't die. That Garveyite spirit still lives on. That energy never really dies. Energy is transferred. And when you believe in something, when you're willing to put your life on the line for something, that creates energy. We're talking science. We're not just talking religion. We're talking science. When you put energy out there, energy is not destroyed. Energy is just transferred. And when you put that energy in the people and you put it out there in such a way that has force behind it, people are going to gravitate towards that and take that energy and run with it. So you live through those people. Let's go back to the Haitian Revolution. They had that spirit of Ogun, that energy, that, that African spiritual system where they're going to get freedom no matter what. It's freedom of death. They put that energy out there and they started winning because you couldn't kill the so-called leaders because the spirit was out there. You couldn't just kill Mackendall and it would stop because that spirit was already out there. You couldn't just kill Toussaint and then the revolution would stop because that spirit was already out there. You couldn't kill Bookman and the revolution would stop because that spirit was already out there and that's why they won. That's why they were able to defeat all of those mighty superpowers. 
They weren't afraid of death because they understood once you get that energy out there, you don't die. That spirit is still alive. The spirit of the, of the Haitian Revolution is still alive now. Let me tell you something. And I posted something on my Instagram the other day. I don't know where these people were, but there was a bunch, there was a crowd of white people doing a voodoo ceremony. I don't know where this was, but somebody sent me the video and I posted it on my Instagram. And understand, people in the dominant white society, they have black people afraid of voodoo. You say voodoo to a Negro, you start, niggas start bucking their eyes. You can't even say voodoo to the average Negro here in the States. You say voodoo to a Negro, say, hey man, we're going to the voodoo shop. Oh Lord Jesus, voodoo, oh Lord, hell no, Lee, count me out, eyes ain't with all that, Lord Jesus, no, that, that ain't nothing but the devil, Lord Jesus, master ain't gonna like that, yo, but feet don't fail me now. You think, oh, you turn into coon, 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 super coon. When somebody says something about an African spiritual system, the eyes start bucking like crazy. But when I was in Haiti, I saw white people going down there learning voodoo left and right. And I posted this video. They trying their damnness to learn that shit. It, it's, it's not going to affect them the same way. I, 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 they can't channel that same type of energy. But they're trying. They're trying their damnness to. They're trying to get some of that damn energy. Trust me, when they see black folks, we got a certain spirit that we're living up to. Oh, they'd be the first ones trying to uh, co-op that spirit and trying to gravitate towards it. That's why I look at um the Masons. The Masons, all that is Moorish signs. That's them doing shit that the Moors were doing. That's all Masonic, all that masonry, all that stuff. That's Moorish signs, stuff that the Moors brought in Europe because the Moors went in there. They were fearless. They were dominating. They weren't afraid and that the spirit of the Moors still live over there. That's all Masonic things are. It's Moorish science. You understand? So these people in the dominant white society, st spirits that we put out there, they try their damnness to get a hold of it. They try their darndest to get a hold of it, and we run from it, we get scared of it, we get afraid of it. But the thing is, once you put that energy out there, your spirit does not die. And the white supremacists understand this. This is why white supremacy is maintained so long. They go all in for their religion. They kill on a regular basis to maintain that spirit and their religion. And the thing is, the reason why black folks suffer for so long, because we don't put no real energy out there. We don't put no real genuine, thorough spirit out there as a whole. The spirit of cowardice only breeds more cowardice. The spirit of allowing people to kick you around and you sit up here scared to say something. Black folks won't even say white supremacy in most parts. Black folks won't even acknowledge white supremacy. We try to talk tough among each other, but when white mommy and white daddy come in the room, oh, you start fiddling and bucking your eyes. There is no spirit of cowardice that's going to be transferred anywhere that's going to make you do anything constructive or positive. It only breeds more cowardice. This is why we're suffering globally. Because this fearful thing where we're just going to sit around and let the white supremacists kick us around and hopefully they won't kick us too hard. You're not living up to your real essence. You're not living up to the true spirit you were born in. Because your ass is already dead. And right now they're kicking around zombies. That's why they have movies like The Walking Dead. This is how we deal with our zombies. They're just walking around. Look at the symbolisms in these movies. That's how they look at you and that's how the spirit realm looks at you. When you don't have any courage and there's mass fear, 
there's mass cowardice, you become a zombie. You have no soul. You have no energy, nothing. There's no honor in mass fear. This is why you're going to continue to get disrespected over and over again. And just like in those Walking Dead shows, how do they deal with zombies? The, the zombies might break bad every blue moon, but, you know, you can contain the zombies with, with minimal effort. You just kind of funnel them here, funnel them there. But as long as they don't just get in your mix, they're not going to do anything proactive. Understand, look at these zombie shows. The zombies are basically reacting. They just walk around and just try to eat you anytime they can catch you. But the, the zombies have no plan. This is why the, the 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 lead characters can outsmart the zombies. They just got to go somewhere where all the zombies can't sneak up on them. But they have no plan. And that's what we're doing. We're walking around dead right now. We've thrown in the towel. We've thrown in the towel in the ring. We're just not going to fight. We're just going to let them punch us around. And hopefully a savior comes and, and takes it all away. There ain't no savior. Jesus ain't coming. White mommy ain't coming. On the show Game of Thrones, and that's the picture that I have up. They have something that is so symbolic of white supremacy. They have this white female character who's blonde. She's being lifted up by all of these dark characters. And they made a point to paint these people to look darker than what they are. Some of these people look like they could have been Middle Eastern or whatever, but they made a point to make these people dark and melanated, almost an orange melanated color. And they're holding this white woman up, worshiping her. That's white supremacy all day. Because black folks, the reason why the white supremacists are so strong, not only do they have their own spirit lifting them up, they have your asses giving your energy, lifting them up. That's why they're so strong over you. You're giving them all of your spiritual energy. You've made the white supremacists your gods. That's why the minute a white supremacist or somebody in the dominant society acknowledges white supremacy, all of a sudden you picking the banjo, lifting them up, crying. Oh, thank you so much, white mama. You is a heaven on earth. You're worshiping. You can't wait to worship white mommy and white damn daddy. You're looking for an excuse to worship them. You cannot wait. When they do something of minimal effort, black folks put all types of extra shit on it. The minute, you notice if a white person learns a black dance, well, we so extra. Oh, shit, you tan it up. Oh, oh, look at me, man. Look at you. Man, I'm gonna invite you to the barbecue. Look at him doing the, the shiggy challenge. Kiki, are you with me? Whenever they do something minimally hip, y'all bucking your damn eyes. If they can, a white girl can twerk a little bit, all of a sudden, oh, especially a nigga. If a white woman can twerk a little bit, oh, nigga, you done ran down and got a wedding ring. Oh, man, that's a pog. That's a fat ass white girl right there. Shit. I was going to wipe you up, Missy. And you know what's interesting? When the white supremacists killed our sister up there in the Bay, and a, a lot of us were talking about it, do you know there were bed wenches all on YouTube still caping for Zaddy? There were bed wenches all on YouTube talking about black men are trying to use this black woman getting stabbed in Oakland as a way to try to get sisters to stop dating interracially. They're, they're caping for Zaddy still. <clears throat> These women are still out here caping for Zaddy. I mean, I've seen several videos of these women complaining that black, talking about black men, we just trying to use this to hate on them. And black men be killing black women too. I heard that type of buck dancing plantation negro nonsense from some of these bedwinches out here on YouTube. Y'all know who some of them are, some of the main ones. They're still caping for Zaddy. Do you know there's been so many 
cases of these white supremacists dating these sisters and killing them, killing their kids. There was a Klansman. I, I forgot what state this is in. This week, he just got arrested. He he purposely would befriend black people and harm them. He's a Klan member. He's in the Klan. He's a hardcore white supremacist. He has one eye. He's a hardcore white supremacist. But he's like, let me let me be more covert in the way I kill some of these niggas. So he would be your friend. He would act like your friend meet these middle-aged sisters, get cool with them, and kill them. And he killed this sister. 43-year-old sister befriended this dude, and he ended up killing her. I mean, this is a dirty little, nasty little looking, with one eye. Now, you can't tell me you couldn't have gotten something better than that in a brother. Because that, that kills me. A lot of these women out here who will, they will die to be a damn bed wench and will complain that brothers, brothers ain't up to par. Brothers ain't stepping up to the plate. All these criteria that you're using for brothers and then you can get a one-eyed trailer park fucking white supremacist hillbilly to kick it with you and then he end up busting you in the head with a fucking bat. This is how desperate and sick we are to be around these white supremacists. I mean, he was a bottom of the barrel hillbilly white supremacist too. Y'all look that story up. But this is why we're gonna continue to suffer as a whole if we don't get that spirit right and your spirit is going to have to dictate the physical because I don't want us to be sitting around playing. When I say physical and spirit, one drives the other because what you do physically will create a certain energy spiritually because spirits are energy. I want y'all to understand that they've measured spirits. They did some studies in, in Europe and Germany where they would get people who were terminally ill and who were dying and they would weigh their bodies after they died and they said that the the bodies would go, would get 21 grams lighter. So there's the 21 gram theory saying that the spirit weighs 21 grams. They, they're really trying, they can measure the spirit. When a person dies, the body loses 21 grams, and that 21 grams is the spirit. I think they did a movie called 21 Grams, but look up the 21 gram theory. The spirits are real. When we talk about spirits, we're talking about the physical. We're talking about science. And again, spirits can be negative and positive, just like all energy can be positive and negative. We're going to have to have a revolutionary, powerful, positive God spirit and that God spirit means that you fight off evil at all costs we cannot sit here and conform to evil and be okay with evil what these white supremacists are doing harming children that shit is evil but the thing is we can't sit up here and be on some forgive shit being godly don't mean you sit up here and be, I forgive you Lord Jesus no 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 you fight evil to the death You fight evil to the death, especially when your children are involved. You sacrifice your life for your children. Your children go, you go. That's the law of nature. You put your life on the line for your children. It kills me to see black folks, your kids getting hemmed up and all you can do is sit up and holler. You understand? We're going to have to invoke that spirit of Ogun. We out here whining and crying every time these race soldiers and white supremacists hem us up. It ain't going to stop. Your crying ain't going to help. Black folks getting around in a circle crying and yelling and being emotional. Put the emotions away. Black people right now, I tell you, this has been like shit. Uh, there's been attacks on black people every single day now. Like in the last week, I mean, it's, it's just going to be an uptick. Now, for the month of August, it's going to be some, there's some shit that's going to go down in August. This is why a lot of these white supremacists are planning stuff in August because they know how we get down. So they're going to test us. They're going to test our resolve. Some big shit is going to happen. There's going to be a major, I'm predicting that now, in August, there's going to be a major racial riot in this country in August. I'm predicting that now there's going to be a major racial riot 
in August. The energy in the Zodiac is already pointing to it. It's going to be major. It's going to happen in August. Because I see if you study white supremacists, too, they, they're gearing up. They're getting prepared for a lot of things in August. And August is a very significant month for black people because it, that's the month of Sekhmet in ancient Egyptian, African astrology. Sekhmet is the lion. Sekhmet is the god of war. Just like Ogun is the god of war. Leo, Sekhmet Leo, Leo the lion, all that stuff. Remember, all the zodiacs, all that shit comes from African spiritual systems. We already had all that stuff. The Greeks went and put their own thing on it. But Leo is Sekhmet. Sekhmet is, a, is, is ancient African shit. So black folks get that, that universal spiritual boost around August. That's when the Haitian Revolution popped off. Jamaica got their independence in August. So the thing is with these white supremacists, scheduling a bunch of stuff in August they're gonna fuck around and catch the right ones because the thing is the good thing that all black people are not cowardly all black people are not cowardly all black people ain't buck dancing punks and throughout history you don't you've never needed all black people to get on board with getting some shit popping in any society you can get a a minimal amount of people can change everything and they're going to fuck around these white supremacists and they're going to catch the right one in August. That energy is already there. And these white supremacists are on a rampage. So I say to the cowardly Negroes, y'all better get ready because the thing is they'll start taking it out on y'all. See, that's the thing. When they try to run up on some, some brothers and sisters who ain't with that bullshit, they will back up off them, but then they'll go after soft targets. And who are the soft targets? The cowardly Negroes. They're going to go after the Negroes who just want to sit up and eat bacon and drink 40s and just kind of, what about black on black crime? You know, you, you just kind of want to do your own thing and everything is hunky-dory and I can walk around and ain't no white supremacy. Those are the ones who are going to be the soft targets. They're going after you. But understand, even though there's a cowardly spirit among black society, all black people ain't on no cowardly shit. And these white supremacists are going to fuck around and catch the right one. And I predict that it's going to happen this August. You understand? So every black person need to be on alert, need to be ready for these white supremacist terrorists out here. Black people need to weaponize everything to protect yourself. With when these white supremacists out here stabbing people in the neck and stabbing up women and all, no, 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 we all got to be ready. The minute we get out the house, sisters, you better have pepper spray, whatever. Brothers have pepper spray because some of these cities you can't carry, but you got to be ready. And no matter what social economic background you in, again, I live in a high tax bracket, but the white supremacists. Half the race soldiers all up in my crib. With Bing Rames, Bing Rames just said today, the police showed up at his house not too long ago with guns because one of his neighbors called the police talking about a big black man broke in his house. Now, and the police showed up with guns. Now, the police know good and well who Bing Rames is. They know where he lives. His damn neighbors know who he is. They know who he, the, they know exactly who Bing Rames is. That was very deliberate. And again, the white supremacists, they've been deputized to, to call the race soldiers to people's houses like that. They did the same thing with Dr. Dre. Remember some random white person called the police and said Dr. Dre pulled a gun on him and they went up to Malibu and went to Dr. Dre's house and had him hemmed up a little bit. So it don't matter. Dr. Dre's a billionaire. Don't matter. It don't matter. That's why I don't get into that. Well, no, I, I'm, I'm doing good. I ain't, no, no. We All victims of white supremacy are equal. We are all equal. We are all equal. Anyway, y'all, man, y'all get that spirit of Ogun popping. Understand, the secret of life is to live without fear. Y'all stop being scared. 
Your spirit does not die. Your spirit lives on if you live without fear. A courageous spirit always lives on. Remember that. Even an evil one. These white supremacists, they have an evil spirit, but they're courageous about white supremacy. Just look at the Clyburn Bundys. These people will go toe-to-toe with the government in order to maintain white supremacy. You have these white supremacist militia groups that will bring it to their asses. They're willing to die. And some of the Clyburn Bundy people did die to make their point known. And their movement is still strong. You understand? Anyway, y'all, I'm going to holler. Don't forget, family, everybody get your Egyptian Musk album right now. Family, did we have we had a great conversation tonight. We had a great conversation tonight. I hope everybody took heed to it. But everybody, and l- let me shout out my the Melanoid 300 family. Boy, we've been having a great conversation in the new group, um, the private group that we have. It's so good to have a thorough conversation without white supremacists and coon trolls because we heavily screen the room and we've, we've been dialoguing majorly. Great, great conversation. And we're going to bring a lot of things that we've been conversating about to light pretty soon. But we've been talking about all types of protection mechanisms. A lot of good conversation because we got military cats. We got lawyers in the room, um, computer guys. Oh, man, great stuff. We've been sharing a lot of real good information. But um, anyway, man, everybody, how many is all about 3,000 y'all came in the room tonight and, and this late. Some of y'all must be from overseas, but all you people overseas, everybody go to iTunes right now. Get the Mink Slide Egyptian Musk album, download that. Or if you have Google Play, you have Android, go to Google Play right now and get that Mink Slide album right now. It's the hottest R&B album in the country right now and we're independent. We're going neck and neck with Drake and Beyonce and shit right now. We're going neck and neck with them. That's how good the album is. The word of mouth on this album is incredible. Critics love it. I'm doing a lot of interviews starting next week because people are really, really loving the album. And you guys are going to love it too. It's a real good vibe and it's real good energy in the album. You dig? Hottest. Somebody said, yes, it's the goddamn hottest. And this is the charts talking. It's the one of the top selling. You go to Google Play, look at the top selling albums, and we're like in the, what, top 10? So this ain't me talking. I'm not just blowing smoke up my own ass. I mean, this is what the charts are saying right now. You can go look at the charts. And like they say, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And we're doing the damn thing with this Egyptian Musk album. You dig? But anyway, y'all, you guys have a great night. I will holler at you on the Sunday show.